The reason I called this talk your new superpower, uh, for those who have been in uh, web design more than uh, you know four or five years, you remember when mobile responsive was the new, you know, had to build everything mobile responsive. Um, building accessible websites as being mandatory, it's coming. I don't know when, but it is coming. And in course, certain um, niches require it. So uh, I'm actually in the middle of a project now that requires, I'm actually building a website um, for, uh, blind, for the blind and visually impaired that provides service dogs for those people. And uh, so we're taking them from a website that was built before accessibility was even, I think the website's maybe over 10 years old, um, a non-mobile responsive website into something that uh, it, we are actually testing all the way through. So before we get started on that, who am I? Um, I've been wielding, building websites for like over 20 years. I started out when Dreamweaver started, actually before that, Go, go Live, if anybody remembers that. I've been using WordPress for eight years. I'm a former art teacher. Um, so I have all the art uh, education, and then I move completely to the opposite end of the spectrum as an IT director, and there is a story behind that, but, uh, and I actually did a small stint as Apple tech support, so I've been freelancing full-time for eight years also. Um, I, I, that decision was made for me because I got laid off, and I had one freelancing client think, oh, I'm going to try this, and, and here I am eight years later. Um, I'm a past presenter at WordCamp Atlanta, WordCamp Birmingham, WordCamp Miami. I've done meetups here in Atlanta, and uh, I'm probably going to start a meetup in uh, South, South Atlanta area in Noonan, Georgia, so uh, for all of us that live south. And uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about, a lot of this was covered in Christine's talk, yesterday and Kim's talk yesterday. But what I'm going to do is actually kind of get more into the technical things that you think of, themes, plugins, and stuff like that. So um, web accessibility refers to the practice of removing barriers that prevent interaction with or access to websites for people for disabilities. Now, my project, I'm working on um, visual people that are visually impaired, but that's also mobil mobility, um, hearing impaired, You've got to kind of think of the whole, the whole gamut when you're building. And uh, one in five people have a disability. And what I loved about Christina's presentation yesterday is she said, you know, if you wear glasses, it's a disability. You know, I am pretty much legally blind without contacts or glasses. Um, in fact, I'm wearing contacts now, and I'll be putting glasses on top of them so <laughs> I can read. Um, so... Uh, um, you can exclude up to 20% of potential users, customers, buyers, clients from accessing your website. Um, so I'm telling you right now, yes, there's work involved, but get ahead of the curve. Because if you do it now and you market that as part of your service, you're going to be ahead of everybody else. And in fact, I'm short story to side, um, I just got a huge project uh, with a retirement uh, community that has owns 12 uh, retirement um, communities throughout the Atlanta area. Uh, they were working with an agency in Atlanta, weren't crazy about what they did. I had one meeting with them that lasted two hours. I now have the project. They're dumping the agency and it was because, well, you do realize that all your websites have to be accessible because some of your communities accept Medicare. And that was not something that the other agency ever even brought up. And even the design that they actually showed me their designs, I'm like, well, this won't pass and this won't pass. I can tell by looking at it. And uh, that was the thing that got me that job. And uh, so be ahead of the curve. Besides, it's the right thing to do. You, want, you don't want barriers between you and what you want, so uh, just do it. Um, the standards, I'm not going to talk a lot about that. Um, it, Christine ca covered that yesterday, and you can go read it, the WCAG standards. What you want to, there's three levels. There's A, which is basically alt images with your, your uh, alt, alt tags with your images, and just some, some basic functionality. What you're striving for is double A, the middle of the road. What I'm striving for in the website I'm building is triple A on most pages. So uh, um, you can go in and read what those are. Uh, and I have some links later on in the slides, and my slides are available. So, um, 
uh, the U.S. Web Accessibility Laws exist now for only organizations that receive federal funding or organizations that work with those that receive federal funding. So uh, when you're doing that interview with a client and if you s remotely smell any federal involvement or if they get anything <laughs> or their clientele, they have customers that they market to that have that, you've got to ask because you have to abide by those laws. Um, now, there is talk about adding the web accessibility standards and making a law across the board with the American with Disabilities Act. I'm gonna say it's probably coming. It's probably coming very soon. Um, you just gotta, you've got to have that accessibility and not have the barriers. You don't wanna be called into you know, a lawsuit because you build a website for a company and they get sued. Now, I'm, I'm gonna bring up a fact because I was helping somebody out online the other day who just had a new website. They built it with a, an accessible theme and uh, he got a lawyer. There are certain lawyers from you know, a certain West Coast state that are trolling for websites. And what they do is they, they hit the contact form and that, that they're saying, your website's not accessible, we're going to sue you. Even though you, know, you don't do business with somebody out in California, but this, this, but this guy had just redid this site. So he thinks the person saw the previous site, which was not accessible, and this one was, and he asked me to do a quick audit on it. And what happened was he was using a theme that worked perfectly, but he had added a CSS rule that broke the tabbing through the menu. And I, so I went through and I just did a quick scan with some tools and said, you know, it's, it's great, this is the only thing that's broken, and here's the CSS rule that's causing it. So, you know, fix this and you'll be fine. So, um, now, what are the legal demands for accessibility? Um, there are lawsuits out there. I only put a few. Uh, Kim had a whole bunch of them yesterday. Uh, and one of the things, like the one I heard very first, and we most have, is Winn-Dixie. Winn-Dixie got sued because they did not have an accessible website, even for screen readers. And why it, it went, th part of the reason it went through is because Winn-Dixie has a rewards program with their little t tick, uh, little scannable thing. And, uh, you, but you had to interact with the website to sign up for it. He couldn't interact, he couldn't sign up for it, so he's being, he is being um, denied the access to the rewards program and the discounts. So you've got to make sure that uh, you follow all those rules and you're not excluding anything, anybody from any offers. Um, Netflix, Hulu, Home Depot, eBay, it seems like the big ones are getting tar tar targeted first the people with the deep pockets. It's only a matter of time before the mom and pop stores get uh, targeted. Okay, if you learn the standards and you understand what the most common barriers are, um, you're gonna do fine. First of all, you're using good markup because you're using WordPress. So that's not gonna be a problem. Learn um, um, ARIA, uh, vet themes and plugins. Just because a plugin says it's accessible or accessible ready doesn't mean it is. And a good example is Beaver Builder plugin. How many people use the Beaver Builder page builder? Like I use it on almost every site I build. Not every module in there is accessible. You're, if you stick with tw uh, ta um, tabs and accordions, you're pretty good. But when you get into the more fancy animated stuff, may not be accessible. Uh, so check, 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 read the documentation. I know most people, they throw a plugin in, their last resort, if something isn't working right, is actually read the documentation. So read it, especially if it's a premium plugin, read it before you buy it. Don't be afraid to say, hey, you know, how is your accessibility? I've reached out to people um, with developers and does this work on accessible? Is this an accessible menu? And uh, Find out, well, no, we haven't got there yet. Okay, cross that one off the list. Um, and you test with tools. Um, and Kim talked a lot about tools. I use uh, um, Wally, W-A-11-Y. Um, uh, if you're wondering why it's called that, because there's 11 letters between A and Y. Uh, so W-A-11-Y. Wave tools, which I'm gonna show you here. Axe is a Chrome uh, plugin. But if you want to get a full list of tools, you know, get Kim's presentation from uh, yesterday. Um, now here are the common barriers. 
non-text content such as images, videos, and don't have a text equivalent. So uh, are your PDFs accessible? If you have video, is it captioned or is there a transcript? You have to have it, uh, have it both ways. Um, captioned or transcript, would both ways would be great, but at least have a transcript, a written transcript of it. Um, user cannot access content via the keyboard. That's a big thing. I'm starting to like keyboard navigate everything to see if it, it will show. Um, can you get there through the arrow keys and the tab key? Um, action items without defined purpose or context, i.e. click here, read more, and I'm gonna talk about how you can uh, solve that now. You have to get around your whole, well, uh, so-and-so's website just says read more or continue reading or has a more link. Why can't my website, why does mine have a big long link like this? Well, because you're accessible. Um, and act actually the problem I'm having with my client now that I'm building the site for because I did that and they told me to turn it off because they just wanted it to say read more. And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> and we can't do that and here's why. Um, the in inability to visually determine if an element has a focus. Um, some people um, turn off that browser focus. When you're tabbing through your website with the tab key, it puts a little border around the element that it's on. Um, some people don't like that, so they actually write a CSS rule that turns that off. So don't do that, because it really helps. Uh, um, using only color to convey information. If you're using charts or grids or um, some visual, make sure that you have an element besides color Use a shape, use an icon along with the color so people that are colorblind aren't going to get lost in the chart. And that they can skip content and uh, they have a skip header and I'll show you that. Most, most WordPress themes have that and it's easy to test um, just by hitting the tab key. Uh, let's see. How can I build with accessibility in mind? Okay, the first part is e easy because you're using WordPress. Good semantic, meaningful HTML5. So if you're picking a theme, make sure it's not a really old one that's not an HTML5. Um, color contrast. Now here's where it gets hard. Um, like for me, I didn't do the design of the website I'm building. They, I'm doing it as a subcontractor for a marketing company. So I didn't do the design. But the designer, I don't think, read one thing about accessibility when they did the design. So the first thing off the bat when I saw it was, this isn't going to pass. This isn't going to pass badly. And so I had to go in and say, well, here's, I'm going to build it like this because I'm build, using Beaver Builder. I can build it out really quick. And then I did the, the testing and I wrote down everything that was wrong and went back to them, went back to the marketing company and said, we need to redo the design and here's why. And uh, if we just tweak this color here, we can make this part accessible. Um, we're going to have to get rid of all that because that's not going to pass. And so we've, in process of building this website, we're actually building every page, testing every page, having user testing on every page. And uh, so it's taking a long time, but we're fixing each problem as we go. And, uh, and meaningful links not click here, read more, continue reading. So um, meaningful headings. Okay, think back to your high school term papers where you had H1s and H2s and then between those H3s. You're, you're, you have a logical order to your, your heading tags. You're not using them because I want, I want this thing to be this size, but I want this thing to be this size, so I'll just use a heading tag. No, you have, it has to be a logical sequence because the people that are using screen readers can see that you actually have a logical structure to your website. So you have your H1 tag and then you have your subheadings H2 and then your sub subheadings H3. Uh, so it makes it easy for them to understand the organization of your content. Alt tags and descriptions for images. Besides being great for SEO, it really helps the user. Now there's two types of um, descriptions. There's the normal short description and then with WP Accessibility Plugin, you can actually enable a long description. Not every website's going to need the long description. A great example that uh, uh, Christine, uh, Kim gave was if it was an artist portfolio website, you'd want to use long descriptions because you're going to be describing pieces of artwork. But for the project we're l working on, we're using short, succinct descriptions um, that tell people exactly what the image is. Um, and 
don't use mega menus. It's really, really hard for people with screen screeners and people with low vision to see because the text on those mega menus are so small and it's just hard for them to read. And plus when they're, they're tabbing through and then they have to tab through this column and then this column and then this column. So, um, you know, I, I'm guilty. I like mega menus, but I'm not using them anymore. So uh, color contrast. This is probably the hardest one I to do because you, you do it. Oh, this is a great design. Um, and then there's not enough color contrast. For instance, the original design for the project I'm working on had a lot of blue and orange together. Um, but they were about the medium shades each. So for colorblind, they're going to look exactly the same. There's no color contrast. So we're like, we need to change this. We, instead of orange, let's use the pale yellow in your, in your design guide um, because we can get enough contrast. Well, this blue isn't quite cutting it if we make it like just a shade darker, uh, we can pass. We can pass with a triple A. So uh, there's websites and stuff for checking that. Black text on a white background is not always the easiest to read, especially for the low vision person or even dyslexic users. Um, there's a great, uh, great WordPress TV uh, video. Go, go watch it on UX design for accessibility. And he actually talks about um, for some dyslexic users, if they change the color background to a specific color, like green or purple, with white text, they can read it perfectly. Um, I actually talked to a young boy who uh, is dyslexic last weekend, and I asked him had he tried that. And so uh, let's sit down on the computer. And he actually found it easier to read when it, for him if it was a green background. And he, he, he ne never knew that because he never noticed it. And I, I just thought this was a neat idea. And when I found out uh, that the son of a friend of mine was dyslexic, I said, can I ask him some questions? <laughs> and uh, it ended up being a really uh, enlightening uh, conversation with him. White text on light backgrounds. First of all, why? Um, I have a designer I work with. Her favorite color combination is a pale blue with white text. And uh, I always say, uh, you can't see this. Well, it looks really good. I said, yeah, you've got, you're, 20, you're 23 and you have 23 year old eyes. I'm not 23, I don't have 23 year old eyes and it's hard to read. And uh, then we'll put it up there and the, her boss is my age. So I, thought, I can't read that, need to change the color. And so, you know, after three years, she's finally starting to get the idea that she needs to stop doing her col favorite color combination of light blue on white text. Um, colorblind users may not be able to see the colored links in the body without underlines. Now, probably the first CSS rule you learned was to remove the underlines from links in the body copy. Put them back. Uh, because especially if you're color, uh, if you're using like the gray text and your links are blue or orange or red or green, because the colorblind person are not going to be able to see the links in your copy. Their visual clue is the underline. Now, of course, you can take it off in the menus and, and in buttons, but in the body copy, underline those links. It really helps. Use a contrast checker to check your color contrast. Not just your, your basic colors like your logo, but every color that you use. Um, and don't put important text on top of busy images. Yeah, we all love parallax. We do that but it's hard to read. And uh, that was one of the big parts of the design that had to change on this website was because they did that a lot, the designer did that a lot. And you're like, I was having trouble reading it. So um, I can imagine somebody who had worse vision than mine or, uh, and needed it, you just sitting there trying to read this white text and on this busy image. Um, and uh, let's go on to fonts, okay. Your base font size should be easy to read. First of all, don't use really skinny fonts and really narrow fonts. Yes, I love really light fonts and I love the, the compressed ones, but they're very difficult to read for the low vision person. Your base font size should be 16 or higher, 16 pixels or higher. I like 18 now. And, uh, um, especially in the menus. You really want that definition and easy to read in your menus. Um, 
Use M's instead of pixels so it's easily scalable for the person who is using their browser to scale the fonts up. Uh, and test your, your pages using the browser zoom. Does it, if they zoom way up and make the, the base font this big, is it breaking the design terribly? You might have to rethink your design. Um, and you can use, there's a text, there's text scaling plugins. There is part one with WP accessibility where you can just kind of up at one size. Uh, but there's other plugins out there that you can actually just, you know, go to town on text scaling. So uh, just think about your fonts. Yes, there, there's some great fonts out there, but they're not always going to be easy for the low vision person. And headings, I talked about this a little bit before, 1H1 um, and the structure, the other elements in some type of logical order. Do not skip between levels. Don't go from H2 to H4 to H3. <laughs> You've got to do it in a specific order. Um, and the website style sheet will do the rest. If you have to resize, you know, one specific H2 tag to something else, then use CSS. Um, screen, uh, don't resize text to give the effect of headings. So page builders, that's very easy to do. Oh, I'm just using a text editor. Let me, instead of making it an H3, because then, it's not the right size I wanted. If it's H3, let me just use the text resize tool in the, in the text editor widget. No, that's not what you do. You have to have some type of structure. Uh, screeners don't understand if you've got something gigantic and it's important that it's what you think is important. Um, and many, meaningful links. Screen readers often do not read the link within the context of the rest of the page. Using the descriptive text, um, properly explains the context. So instead of click here or about us, you know, re read, read more. You have your little about us on your home page, read more. Well, instead, uh, click here to read more about and then the name of the business. Yes, it makes a longer link, but it's the person with the screen reader is going to understand that link. Um, instead of, um, you know, you know, learn more about name of business and about us. Click, and then it's a link that's underlined. So um, images, when you make images, you should al already be adding alt tags, even to background images. Every image should have an alt tag. Start making uh, every image have an alt tag and description. You're just like, well, I hand this website off to my client, and when they add images, they're not gonna do that. They're just gonna add the images. Well, that's part of educating the client. Now that's also saying, okay, when you're handing the website off and you're doing the, the um, training for your client to take over the website, that's an excellent opportunity to bring up the web plan, the, your website care plans. You know, you've brought it up when the proposal, um, you've brought up, okay, now when you, when you add a new page to your website, remember when you change a picture, you're gonna have to do this and this and this. I actually made a little ebook um, for the staff at the organization that I'm do building the website. So we thought the best way to teach them is on their organizational level pages is that they add the content following the directions in the little ebook. You have to add an alt tag, you have to have an image, you have to do headings correctly. So I kind of covered all this with examples. Then I made how-to videos and put it in the back end of the website. So this is how you add content. This is how you change content on your website. Now, when you start saying this is how you have to do everything when you change content on your website, when you change images, when you change this, they're gonna say, well, can't you just do that for me? Well, absolutely, if you're on a care plan and so now you're getting that reoccurring income and you're doing it for your client, and you're making sure the website stays accessible. Um, menus, uh, here's the big thing. You must be able to access sub-menus with keyboard navigation. Now, the best way to test this is almost every theme has a demo page, especially the premium themes. Go to the demo and start hitting the tab key because usually they have at least one drop down in their demo. And now, I can tell you that I had been using Beaver Builder theme. Um, Genesis, if you're still in Genesis framework, no problem. But if it's a third-party theme, make, make sure you test it. Um, I was using Beaver Builder on some small sites rather than setting up Genesis or Generate Press, and I, of course, went to their documentation. Oh, it's accessible. Well, it was, but for some reason right now on the Beaver Builder theme, you hit the tab key and you get to a menu that has a submenu. It is not dropping down 
the, the submenu. It is still tabbing through the submenu, but there's no visual clue that, ta that it's happening. So and I actually started building the website for this organization with Beaver Builder theme, and I had to go back and redo it. I switched it over to Generate Press. Generate Press is excellent. Astra is another one um, that is really good. So look for accessible themes and test them. And test them often. Don't just test them at the beginning because, um, like I said, the, the person I did the audit on, he had written CSS rule that broke that. So test, 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 all the way through it. Um, and don't forget to test sidebar menus. In fact, um, w, uh, Ultimate, w, Ultimate Beaver add-ons, they have a, me, um, a menu um, widget or module. It is not accessible. Um, I had used that on part of the website and found out that you can't tab through the, the submenus on that one. So I reached out to them and say, you know, this isn't accessible. Oh yeah, we know. Well, are you going to do anything about it? Um, not right now. I'm like, okay, won't be using that one. Um, can't use that. So that made me go back and test every module I used to make sure it was accessible. Um, there's, a, there's a class built into, Word, into WordPress called uh, Screen Reader Text Class. So for instance, a great way, how many people when they do header menus leave off the home button on a header menu? because it's right there next to the logo, oh, you don't need it, or I have too many menu items, I don't put it in there. You can still add it, give it a class, a screen reader text, and um, so it's still vis visible to the screen reader, but not to the regular person. So there's a great, uh, if you go to the WordPress codex and look that up, it explains it. Um, if you Google it, there's uh, another website that, uh, I think this is the one I have here, um, the two links I have here on my slides, uh, talk about that. And uh, go and read and how, do, how you can use that class to actually um, make your menus accessible, but still make them the way you want the, um, the hierarchy that you'd like to have. So themes, start with themes that claim that they support it. Genesis works great. Um, Generate Press, that's a free theme, and then they have a, an add-on that's a premium, which is $39 for unlimited sites, so that's a huge, huge bargain. Um, and don't just take their word for it, because accessible ready doesn't mean accessible. Um, test their demos, and then test all the way through. Every time you do a page, test. When you write CSS, test. Just hit start hitting that tab button and seeing if that something that you wrote in the CSS menu broke it because I did that and I had to go out go back and change that. Um, plugins. You have to read the documentation, reach out to the developer. If you find an issue, um, make sure the form plugins. I know a lot of people, I use Gravity Forms, um, but make sure that the f if you're using a free form plugin that it is accessible. Um, your page builder modules, N not all of them are, um, uh, so ch test it. And uh, WP Accessibility plugin and the Wally uh, plugin, Wally brings the one of the website testing tools into your website, uh, so you can test it along the way. It's a great, great plugin. And read the documentation, and I can't say this, you do not wait to the end of the design and development to worry about accessibility. You worry about it from day one you start working on the project because by then it's too late and you're going to go back and have to do a lot, a lot of redo and it's going to end up taking you more time. Um, what tools? Uh, contrast checker. I'm going to show you an, an example. Sim Daltonism is a Mac app that allows you to test different types of color blindness. Uh, and you can get that off the App Store. Axe by DQ Labs, it's a browser add-on. Uh, Wave, um, I'm going to show you that one, wave.webaim.org, and they also have a Chrome plugin, the Wally plugin, and third-party services. Now, uh, these are, you know, if you have a client who just wants to throw money at the issue, <laughs> uh, Site Improve, Tenon, DQ, they all have premium services that they come in and make sure your website's accessible and it stays that way. 
um, my client's actually going to end up using site improved to make sure that they stay that way. Um, I'm just the contract worker, so I'm not selling a care plan to them, and the marketing agent I'm doing that for is not going to do that. So they're actually going to be using a third-party service. Um, use, your, use your phone. Test your phone. Turn on your tablets. Um, accessibility features. Just remember how to turn them off. Um, and uh, screen readers. You can download free, free screen readers. Use what's built into your Mac or PC. Download ones. There's paid ones that are very expensive. Um, and test. I, we, we are very lucky that we actually have a group of volunteers. We have low vision people. We have uh, uh, and uh, blind people testing every page that we build and we're getting great feedback and one of the things I've learned is screen readers do not all do act, there's no standard there's no like every screen reader must do this because we have some screen readers that will only see unordered lists bullet pointed lists if it's a bullet but if you use a custom icon they don't see it as it yeah there's some because I had one design where like uh, I had them test it and one screen reader was not seeing it as a as a list and uh, so, you know, just kind of, I went back and did bullet points because we knew that it was going to pass. Um, and uh, look at WordPress TV. If you just Google accessibility on WordPress TV, you're going to see a lot of great talks. Um, upcoming in May is an iThemes webinar called the Accessibility Summit. Now, it's a paid webinar. It's not expensive. Um, how is Nathan in here? No. no. Okay. I I want to say it's like $67 um, for a few hours of every, going over in depth of everything that I'm talking about here. Um, it's May 2nd. And uh, search for webinars. WP Engine put on a webinar uh, back in February on accessibility. If you get your emails from your different marketing people that, uh, that you do, a lot of people are doing them now. They're like, there's at least one every week. Um, and then follow what WordPress is doing about accessibility. Because it is, it is coming, it's going to be mandatory soon, so you might as well be at the top of the curve. So I'm going to exit here and kind of show you um, one tool, a couple tools here. Let me put my glasses on so I can see. Um, here's how not to do it. Let's uh, um, look at ESPN. Uh, see if we can get... Well, it's not coming up. Wonderful. It doesn't look accessible. Yeah, it's not. It's <laughs> <laughs> this is just the home page, and there's actually it's gone down. The last time I looked at it was 254 major errors um, on ESPN.com. So they're going to have a lot of work to do down the road to uh, make their website accessible, and most of it has to do with the heading issue. Um, and you, with, this is wave.webaim.org. You can put in... Uh, any website here and get the report on it. Now sometimes a website is very very busy with that so it's easier. They have styles, no styles and contrast. So if we go I'll just go back to, this is um, a competitor to my client and as you can see this is <laughs> yeah, it's like whoa I've never seen with this much markup. So it's actually easier to view it with no styles. And uh, they uh, did uh, with their report, they have zero errors, excellent. They don't have 28 alerts, or alerts are things, you know, look at it, see if it needs to be fixed. Keep in mind that some of them are false positives. Um, I found that anything that has a parallax background, um, even contrast checkers don't get that right. So um, uh, if it's got a, a background image, even if it's really just very, very paint, the contrast checkers aren't picking it out. So um, Here's your alerts. You get here, and then you can actually click through, and it will. You can see the little movement up here in the upper type. It's pointing out where it is. Um, there's uh, uh, two nearby images have the same alternative text. Uh, um, here's uh, six orphan form labels. Now, are they really orphan form labels? Maybe, maybe not. So, um, six. There are six unlabeled form elements within the title. 
uh, two missing first, here's one, two missing first level headings. So somebody went to an H2 without an H1. So um, very small text. Uh, and then, then it tells you everything that you're doing right, which is encouraging. So um, it's like, oh, everything. But, but this one, I mean, this is a website. They just launched this new website just a couple weeks ago. And it's doing fairly well. Then the color contrast. Um, they have a lot of issues with uh, very low contrast, but they probably had people test it. Um, is it really, really up going to be an issue? Because you can't, you take this with a grain of salt, but use it as a starting point. Um, this is the website I'm working on. Uh, uh, one of the things we're finding, like right now we have uh, five errors and when um, it was multiple form labels, and it says broken skip links, but the skip links work fine. So really there's, and the multiple form labels, they have, I've checked the code, it does have labels, so it's false. Um, and uh, you look at it at no styles, and then the color contrast, um, and the very, very low color contrast. Uh, the issue they're having is with this right here. And I'm trying to get them to let me make the images just a little bit less and a little bit more of an overlay um, just to, to pass. But you can see the text is all passing. I'm triple A passing on the menus and on the text. And that, to me, is the most important. Uh, and um, let's see. This is probably one of my favorite tools. And then you have the contrast checker. If you're doing colors when, when you're actually designing, Come back, come to the contrast checker and check to make sure. Is it going to be enough of a contrast? Is there going to be enough contrast between this blue and, let's say, okay, and, you know, this orange? Is there going to be enough of a contrast? It's getting closer to no, there's not going to be enough contrast. So you can picture colors in there, do them a check before you, you do the design. And, uh, with all the different tools between Kim's and the, here, and I have this actually listed out, you're going to be able to uh, do your checks along the way. Your goal is to be AA accessible um, for all the websites that you build from this point forward. And you're going to be that, that's going to be your new superpower to market your web designs. Oh, by the way, we, all the websites we build are accessible um, when we hand them off and you know, it's up to you to keep them that way, but we're going, to, we're going to do everything we can to make sure that your website's accessible to everyone, all, everyone that's out there, and uh, make that a big deal. It's going to put you ahead of the curb. And uh, so I'll take any questions that you have now. Yes, sir. Is Parallax fundamentally incompatible with uh, accessibility? No, but it all depends on what you put behind it. It depends on what the video is. Is the is the video um, uh, water uh, uh, ocean wave lapping up on sand, and is the text dark on light? Yeah, it's probably going to pass. But uh, the best way is to find is to get human testing, um, and uh, you can reach out and see if you can find somebody to test it for you. Somebody who will, you know low vision. For me. Um, one of the great tools I love that, that Kim showed yesterday that I wasn't aware of was the, the blurring, bl website blurring, because without my contacts or glasses, my field of vision where I can see clearly is literally this far. Anything beyond this point, which is about six inches from my face, is a big blur. Um, I would probably get hit by a car if I ever tried to cross the street um, without glasses because my vision is that bad. And... Uh, so for me, if I can, if I can kind of see the website sitting in my chair with my iMac here, and I can actually navigate the website <laughs> without my glasses, then I think it's, I can actually see it and move around. So it's those, you know, stay away from that tiny text and uh, just look at it. Uh, yeah, I love the video backgrounds, but if it's a moving city at night and it's white text, it's probably going to be very difficult for somebody to read.
breaking glass or breaking mirrors and it was something about a breaking barriers workshop. Well, the reflection from the mirrors actually caused, uh, you know, caused me to think, whoa, wait a minute, is that a flashing light? And that, you know, that's the flash, if it's a certain consistency, it could cause seizures. Exactly. And so that was one thing that, that's the first time I've ever really seen it, that it, luckily it was fine, mm -hmm. but definitely watch what flashes at you. You know, yeah. that's going to be my question because I do have epilepsy mm -hmm. and um, I work on my own site so I don't know how to be conscious of something like that so is there like, something you would suggest so I know how to be conscious of things that will make someone have a seizure when I'm building my site? What she talked about, it, things that do a lot of flashing and, and uh, uh, change of color contrast, very, a very sharp change of color contrast. Um, because that even bothers me uh, as far as it, you know, eventually give you, for me, it gives me a headache. So uh, um, let me go back to my uh, slides really quickly here. And uh, um, here's how you can uh, reach me if you have any questions and you want to discuss things further. My Twitter is MGA Creative and I'm Melanie MGA Creative Designs. And uh, you can get these slides at my website. Um, and I'm sure they'll be sending out a link to all the slides that everybody had this weekend later on. So, are there any more questions? Yes, sir. Um, have you been able to monetize how much you're putting into this for the customer on average job? Is there a certain amount that you're adding to every job that you're doing? Um, well, I kind of up my rates about every six months. So, uh, um, <laughs> uh, hey. I, I learned that from my business coaches. You need to reevaluate, you should need to raise your prices consistently. So what I'm doing is uh, I just kind of automatically raise my rates, but it does add extra, t extra time to a project. So you should probably adjust your rates accordingly. Now, of course, like any new skill, I haven't been doing this, you know, more than a year. So um, you get faster at it. So the first time, you know, I'm reading, I spent a lot of time reading before the project started and watching WordPress TV and reading everything about it before I started the project. But when I'm doing it and then I'm testing it, and this has been a long process because we, you know, we do a page, we have, we send it, I send it to the marketing, they talk to the, the organization, the organization has their users test it. So it may be like uh, five days a week before I get feedback on something that I've built. So. Um, it's, it's a time intensive thing, but at, like any other skill, if you're gonna get faster at it. And once it becomes part of your repertoire, um, you're gonna have, we, most of us that do this for a living, we have our go-to themes. So we have one or two or three that we stick to. So now you're not gonna have to look for a theme. And, know, and now you're testing this, okay, I know that if I do this um, on a sub-menu, it may break the accessibility of the tab down. So, and you'll start testing, you'll just start getting, you'll be actually start using keyboard navigation a lot more just to test things. You know, sit down there, okay, let me test this page before I close it. And make sure you can tab all the way from the top. Um, a great example, I'm gonna talk about skip links, and I didn't do that, so let me um, talk about the, the skip links. When you hit the tab key the first time, upper left-hand corner, skip to content. First thing you should look for when you're testing a theme. So when they, they can actually skip the entire header, go straight to the content. Because um, if they're in your home page and they've already clicked a link to go to one of your inside pages, they don't need to go through that whole menu again. Uh, so definitely test for that and make sure that it works. And uh, so you got, you know, skip to content when you start hitting the tab. And then when you start hitting the tab key, now when you get to a header menu, does it go through all the submenus? Does it, does it visually make the submenu drop down? And mine goes all the way through the third level menus. So, then this is generate press uh, theme. I'm a big fan of Genesis also, um, but uh, I started using generate press because it's very similar to Genesis. Um, and uh, it works great with Beaver Builder. So, uh, is there any more questions? Yes, ma'am. Who's Aria? Okay. Early on, 
Yeah, I'm like tr I was going to say what it was, and I totally drew a blank. Kim, can you what, what is Aria? What does Aria stand for? Um, accessible yeah, accessible. I always get to the accessible rich, and then I forget the internet application. Accessible. So um, some sliders. If you use uh, sliders on your website, because we all know that our clients love those, um, make sure you pick one that that um, supports that. And I know, like, like soliloquy, I know is is one that does. So um, you want to make sure that uh, it passes that. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Um, are there any ways to check, um, technically check for uh, cognitive um, accessibility for people that have cognitive disabilities? No. Um, one thing, I, I asked that, um, I have a client, he's an older guy, mm -hmm. I'm going to make that his cognitive disability. Yeah. He loves to see HTTP, HTTPS, and I don't have an issue with it. Uh -huh. One of our designers hates to see these links written out fully, and Bill says, I want to know that that's a link. I don't mm -hmm. want to just have an underlying, I want to see the whole thing. And um, that works, he's the boss, but uh, the guy that we work with, constantly is hammering on that. Yeah, um, well I, I would do it as a link and put the text, you know, the link text and not put the whole URL in there, but um, no, but that's, a, that's an interesting point. I'm actually, um, a good friend of mine is uh, a Down syndrome uh, young man and, and, and I'm going to actually <laughs> bring him in and, and see if, does the website make sense because he really loves um, his, well, I, his iPad, so uh, he spends all the time on his iPad and, and, and absolutely loves it, surfing the internet. So every Sunday at church, he shows me what he's found that week on his <laughs> iPad. So, uh, um, so I'm, when I see him at church next Sunday, I'm going to actually ask me, I said, well, how do you, I'll ask him about the website and see. That's, a, that's an interesting question. Uh, I've got a full question. blog of yeah. mine with Down syndrome does all email you at. Maybe oh, oh, awesome. Right. Thank you. Okay. Do you see uh, standards change based on industry? Like you mentioned, um, you know, something tied to Medicare earlier. Yeah. And then, uh, recently I was talking with someone that does a lot with banking clients, like marketing sites for you know, well, there's financial industries. Their financial industries are getting sued now, too. So does, does, yeah. it, does it change yeah. based on industry? Or um, well, the requirements change right now on industry as far as if, you know, they have any acts, any, any, relationship to the federal government, they have to be accessible. And that's where the banks and uh, the healthcare industry are um, having issues is because, you know, like my retirement communities, out of the 12, um, two of them don't take Medicare. So technically they don't at this point need to be that way because that they don't have any relationship to, but it's owned by the organization, this whole organization. So of course we're just gonna make everything accessible um, from this point forward. So you've got to, um, if you do it now, then it's not going to be an issue uh, down the road because it is, it is coming. Um, and uh, as you can see, with the big people getting sued right now, it's only a matter before the middle level of businesses start getting sued. And then, no, the mom and pop stars, stores, just like, you know, the ones that hunt down the stores that are the physical brick and mortar stores that aren't accessible. Mm -hmm. So you could say that the proof that are coming. Mm -hmm. uh, the WordPress community, where they are not coming. Yeah. Uh, so putting the effort behind yeah. making WordPress in a theme mm -hmm. um, as that's the bar. Mm -hmm. This week, if you go to WordPress.com, yep. you can do that statement. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I, I, I don't like that one at all. I used it for about 10 minutes once. and <laughs> um, I've fixed websites that use Divi, but um, I don't know about it. But you could reach out to Elegant Themes and ask them what their, their accessibility. There's someone who wrote a plugin for Divi. It's called Divi Accessibility. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But like anything, not ev not all the modules in Divi, just like all, not all the modules are going to be um, easy for the person that's especially low vision. I'm finding that building for screen readers is actually easier than building the, for the low vision person. So that actually takes more work. Yes. 
had a question about accessible forms. I know mm -hmm. we're supposed to be using them to be compliant. Mm -hmm. Can you give more detail about that? What exactly makes a form accessible? The forms that have, they have labels. Um, you can tab through the form fields. Okay. Um, not all forms do that. I mean, back in the, I remember several years ago when I first started using Gravity Forms, you actually had to write some code to make it so you could tab through the form fields. So um, since most of the free forms, you, you know, things, that's the first thing, throw, throw a contact form on the page, hit that, t can you tab through the form fields? Um, can you tab through and hit enter and submit the, the uh, form without ever clicking on it? Thank you. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I thought they should, that the forms were organized. Mm-hmm. Right now, with a few all over the place. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>